Hey, this is Retric, going to give a tutorial on how to merge a geoset. So, today's example of a geoset, I'm going to take the Watcher here, uh, and I'm going to replace its weapon with the weapon of a Clockwork Goblin. Sort of make a Night Elf worker looking thing, you know, Night Elf mechanic. Alright, so I've got my Watcher, and in order to do this, you want to delete the weapon of the Watcher. Now, one of two things will happen if you want to delete a weapon. It's either going to be on its own geoset, or it's going to be a part of another geoset. So you kind of hover your mouse over the different geosets, look at what options you've got. In this particular model, uh, we've got we've got a corpse. We're not going to do anything with that, so I'm going to make it un invisible right now. Not going to work on it. Uh, we've got a sort of team color body geoset, and the geoset that includes the weapon. So team color body geoset, I don't really need to change that right now, so I'm going to make it uneditable, but sort of good to see. So I'll leave it there so I can see the entire Night Elf Watcher. Then our first geoset, this one contains the weapon. Now, if the weapon were on its own geoset, I would want to remove it. Uh, an example how to do that would be to use Edit Delete Model Components, and maybe I'll go into, the, into that in another tutorial. But for this example, the weapon is a part of the first geoset, so it's going to be really simple to remove. All you do is you start with a select, and you drag it around the different parts of the weapon here, select them all, select, make sure you get every point. Uh, one way to be sure that you've selected the entire weapon is just do a move command, drag it off to the side, and then if any part of it sticks behind, you know you've missed part. In this case, looks like I've got the entire weapon, so I'll just push delete on my keyboard. Weapon's gone, ready for an import. Now, the other model we want to work with is the Clockwork Goblin. Here, I've got my little Clockwork Goblin guy. Uh, he's got his wrench, right? And we want to take off that wrench. So you just select all the points of the wrench, you know, using shift there, select them all up. And you can do Control I will invert your selection. So everything that was selected is now unselected, and everything that was unselected is now selected. Thereby, if I push delete on the keyboard, and the entire Clockwork Goblin is gone. Now in this case, one of the geosets, geoset 1 here, uh, is going to face a problem that it's empty. So when I save, maybe I do a save as and call this a clockwork goblin wrench, right? For this example, it's going to complain, attempting to save a geoset with first, you know, it's problem, it's problem. What it's really trying to say is first geoset is empty. So because the first geoset is empty, uh, this model would have a problem if we tried to use it. But we can still import data out of it, and it should be fine. So Here's our watcher again. If we go File Import, we can import the Clockwork Goblin Wrench. Now this, this menu pops up. It's very important what you do in this menu, but you can keep in mind that while you're clicking around in this menu, nothing is actually imported until you click Finish. So anything you click Yes or No on or Change and any of these options, none of them has actually changed the model until you click Finish. So you've got your Clockwork Goblin Wrench, uh, Geoset 1 and 2. Now Geoset 1 is the Geoset with Team Color. That's the one that's now empty. So we'll just uh, not important. And if you weren't sure whether that was the one that was empty, you could come back to your Clockwork Goblin wrench. You can mouse over the geosets. If I mouse over geoset 2, the whole wrench turns green. If I mouse over geoset 1, nothing happens. So geoset 1 is the empty geoset that we don't want to import. Come back to my import here. Uh, we've got animations. So, you know, we've got several of these animations on the Clockwork Goblin, but we don't want them. So we'll just click Leave All. And in Bones, it also had several bones, but we're not going to use any of the Clockwork Goblin bones. We're just going to attach it to the bones of the watcher matrices tab. Now, as you can see, the Clockwork Goblin wrench was previously attached to the Mesh 92 and wrench head bones inside of the Clockwork Goblin model. But now that it's going to be inside of the Watcher model, the program has an empty list over here. It already knows that inside the Watcher model it can't be attached to what it used to be attached to. So we're just going to go to the Watcher weapon over here and we're just going to say use bones. That adds it to our list of new uh, references of what bones are referenced by the Goblin wrench. So we'll do that in all these options. So we're just overriding all the motion of the wrench, so it's just all attached to the watcher's weapon. It's just going to be one moving object, all attached to the weapon. Then we go objects. You know, these are all some of these particle emitters, little explosion effects and sounds, and the clockwork goblin. We don't want any of that, because we're just taking a wrench. So you just do leave all, all that. Then you come to visibility. Now here's the clockwork goblin wrench. We want it to take its visibility information from the first geoset of the watcher. So you can just click watcher geoset 1. In some cases, you might want to take your geoset visibility data from something else, you know, and all the particle emitters and pretty much anything in the model that has any kind of visibility data should show up on this list. Just click Geoset 1. So now in the decay animation, when the watcher's first geoset, that body, and you can come back and look at the watcher if you want, it's first geoset there, the green one, it's the body, when that geoset's invisible, so during the decay when it's dead, now the wrench will be invisible because we've said that the existing animation, the animations of the watcher, uh, will take all their visibility data from the Watcher Geoset 1 and apply it to the Clockwork Goblin Wrench. So now we click Finish. We're going to up all these settings we've clicked will all be introduced into the model. You can see here immediately the wrench appears and uh, it does appear where it used to be in its original model. So you're going to have to do some move on it, you know, select some of these vertices and move them around. Uh, 
as you're going, you can make sure, you know, if you want to help yourself, make the watcher, just the entire watcher, uneditable so you can't break anything, you know, it's sort of a little fail safe for you there. And you can move around this wrench, put it in the watcher's hand, and rotate it, you know, maybe get it just how you want it, right in the little hand there. And then you've got your watcher with a wrench. And you should be able to do a save as, you know, maybe give it something like watcher mechanic, you know, maybe it's a mechanic watcher because it's got a wrench. You can save it, and then, uh, you know, say you wanted to view it, you just open up the War 3 model editor. I'm using Magos here, you know, just sort of a viewer. And you open up Watcher Mechanic, and you can see your model. You know, you can go uh, Animation Controller. You can do, like, Stand, you know, and you see your, your wrench is there. All the texture animation about how it's textured is all imported by the Matrix Eater. So it already looks just like a Clockwork Goblin wrench. You know, the, the Watcher knows how to do its attack animation, and the animation was applied to the wrench when we changed the matrices. So... Everything looks like it has imported successfully.